Jared Willis, Russia continues its attacks in eastern Ukraine. Vladimir Putin is again warning outside countries from interfering and raising the specter of a nuclear attack. Bradley Blackburn reports on how the Pentagon is responding. On the ground in eastern Ukraine, the fight against Russia continues with support from American volunteers like U.S. Marine veteran Joshua Cooper, who told CBS News he traveled to the front on his own. What are you expecting in the days and weeks ahead? I expect that we will uh, put a hurting on the Russians and uh, hopefully deter them from advancing. But Russia's Vladimir Putin is fighting back against the international community with new tools, cutting off the sale of Russian gas to Poland and Bulgaria, and warning that any country that interferes in Ukraine will face a lightning fast response, suggesting that could include nuclear weapons. It's irresponsible rhetoric. Um, uh, it's, it's rhetoric uh, beneath what should be the level uh, of, uh, of conversation by uh, a modern nuclear power. We monitor the, the threat every single day, including today, uh, and the secretary remains comfortable that we have the appropriate strategic nuclear deterrent posture in place. With images continuing to emerge of civilian casualties, human rights lawyer Amal Clooney spoke at the UN yesterday, urging the Security Council not to let war crimes go unpunished. But here we are, faced with evidence of the crime of aggression, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and mounting evidence each day of the crime of genocide. Senator Dick Durbin, co-chair of the Senate Ukraine Caucus, says in the coming days he will introduce the War Crimes Accountability Act, legislation he insists will ensure the U.S. has the tools to hold accountable the perpetrators of war crimes and other atrocities. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News.